Hello and good morning once again, options traders. Well, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about the probability for a certain event to happen for an option strategy. And in fact, I had a trader that said, check out this guy's website or these YouTube videos. And he's talking about this strategy that only has a probability of this happening and therefore it seems like free money. And the point that I want to really stress in this video is that when you are looking at probability models, they are mathematical models, obviously, but they are driven simply by the probability for a random walk. It has nothing to do with earnings, earning surprises, takeovers, buyouts, rumors, anything like that, which are all things that can certainly happen in the stock market. And in fact, those are usually the things that cause the biggest moves, the biggest unexpected moves. And when people rely solely on probability models, they can end up making some very bad mistakes. So this is not saying that Thinkorswim has done anything wrong. To the contrary, it is my favorite platform. They have done an absolutely amazing job. I'm just saying that when traders are using probability models, you've got to be really careful and understand where these numbers are coming from. They're not crystal balls. So for example, let's go to an Excel spreadsheet. And I've shown similar things like this in the past. It's just a stock price model. I've made an imaginary stock price starting at 100. And we're going to let it just drift away for 250 trading days, which is roughly the number of trading days in a year. So you can see that there is a certain path that it took. And the only thing driving this, you can think of it as a coin flip. Let's say heads, it moves up a certain percentage, tails, it moves down a certain percentage. That's really the bare bones meaning of volatility. There's just some uncertainty surrounding these little nudges up and down that can happen every second of the trading day. And by the end of the year, they can accumulate to make it a much bigger move up, down, but on average, we should expect it to go just sideways. So in this first run, we can see that the stock started at 100 and ended up pretty close to 100, but that won't always be true. If we did it many more times, we might get this. And if we did it thousands of times, we might get this. Now keep in mind, this is for just 20% volatility. And look at the potential ranges for the stock price just from nothing else other than volatility. So if we were to tabulate the number of times that the stock price ended up out here after a year, we would get roughly a bell curve. So this idea of a stock price moving sideways through time, if we flipped it on its head, it would look just like a bell curve, or at least pretty close. It's a, actually it's called a log normal distribution. But the idea is that whenever we look at stock price models, this is what they are modeling. If the stock is 100 today, We've got one year to expiration. What's the high? What's the low? And this is the only thing driving it. And yet, for some reason, traders think this is the be all end all that a stock price can't possibly get higher than this number or lower than this one. And that is simply not true. So remember, when you're dealing with a pricing model, it assumes only volatility. That's the main driver. And yeah, we could technically say interest and dividends, but it's really these things that affect the stock price. That's according to the pricing model. We know in the real world, there's a lot of other things, even rumors. So the thing that we want to figure out is that when you're looking at the probability analysis tab, or sometimes called the probability cone in TOS, how is TOS coming up with the numbers? Well, to start, we have to understand a little bit more about volatility and fair warning. This is going to get a little technical. Don't worry about the math. It's the message that matters most. But for those who want to know a little deeper insights where these numbers are coming from, remember that volatility is proportional to the square root of time. And we've talked about this before. This is why we have the square root pricing rule with options. That's why option prices move according to the square root of time. And that's because volatility is proportional to the square root of time. Now keep in mind that time is always expressed in years. So if we have a call option, let's say with 180 days to expiration, and the platform says that the stock has been trading with 40% volatility, we don't use 40% volatility. And in fact, we don't use half of that, even though this is a half of a year. So we wouldn't use 20%. What do we use? Well, we take the square root of time. 
So remember that time is always expressed in years. So 180 days, again, is a half a year. Square root of a half is about 0.71. And that's going to come up to about 28.3%. Again, we're just taking the 71 times the 40% volatility. So what you can think of is that effectively, we are going to call it 28.3% volatility, even though the stock might be registering 40%. However, in addition to that, there is a correction factor. We have to do this little correction factor. It's going to get way too technical to talk about in this video, but we have to add and subtract the variance over two. So for those of you who have had statistics, will remember that the variance is simply the square of the standard deviation, which in trading terms is the volatility. So in this case, we would take 0.40 squared gives us 16. So the upper bound, we would have to take 40% minus 16 and actually use about 24 instead of 28.3. So there's this little technical correction for your really short-term options and especially cheaper stock prices, this is going to be negligible. You could probably just use this just as easily to come up with a good estimate. But for longer dated options and or more expensive stocks, we definitely need to account for this. So again, don't worry too much about the math, but I just want to show you where Thinkorswim is coming up with these numbers. So let's jump over to the Thinkorswim platform and take a look at the probability analysis tab. All right, so now we're into the Thinkorswim platform, and I've clicked on the Analyze tab up here at the top. And under there, we have several sub-tabs. I'm on this one right here that says Probability Analysis. And that's going to give you this probability cone. There are other places to get it in the Thinkorswim platform. You can actually overlay this on top of a stock chart. But they are all getting their numbers from the same places. So I'm going to start with AMD, which I just happen to have on the chart. So start up here at the top. Do you see where the volatility is 68.54? This is what TOS is pulling from all of the trade tabs over here. If you look at all of these volatilities, it's kind of using an average. And you can change this, and I'll show you how in just a moment, but that's where it starts. And so it's using this as a base volatility to generate this cone. And down below we have number of days. So this is 30 days from today's date, here's 60 days. We can left mouse click and drag. It'll take us out into the future. And of course, these cones start getting wider and wider. And that's because with more time that the stock has the ability to drift further away from its current price. So let's go out a ways. Let's see if we can get closer to a year. We'll try this one right here with 320 days to expiration. And it's telling us that the stock has a high of about 167.37 and a low expectation of 46.39. Now also another important caveat, this is assuming one standard deviation. And we can change that right up here. One standard deviation encompasses just a little over 68% of the area under a bell curve. So that's important. A lot of times traders look at those numbers and they say, oh, those are the absolute limits. Well, no. That's only for one standard deviation. Those numbers are going to happen about 68% of the time, which means 32% of the time, you're going to be outside of those ranges. In other words, 16% of the time you could be higher and 16% of the time you could be lower. So this is another reason why it's important to understand what it is that you're looking at. So let's come down here and it is telling us that the stock price it's using is 108 25. And I believe that Thinkorswim takes snapshots throughout the day just so that these numbers aren't constantly flickering. I think it's about every 10 or 15 minutes it'll take the last trade or the midpoint between the bid and the ask. But that'll stay fairly constant, at least for a short time. But we could also change it down over here to the right. That's the default 108.25. I could change that number and it would, of course, change the numbers here in the chart. I can also do a volatility adjustment. So we saw that the volatility was 68.55. If I wanted to make it exactly 68, I could just put minus 0.55 right there and it would subtract off 0.55 off of that number. But I'm just going to leave it for right now, but that's what that volatility adjustment is. 
But the thing that we want to look at is right here with 320 days forward, the upper limit is 167.38 and the low is 46.38. So where are these numbers coming from? Well, let's go over to an Excel spreadsheet and take a look at the calculations that we did in the presentation. So in this spreadsheet, what I've done is I've highlighted in red the numbers that we have to enter by hand. So today's date is 3-6 of 2022, and the date that we were trying to evaluate in TOS was January 20th of 2023. Now in Excel, I can put these in this format, and I can say take this date minus this date. And that's what this number is right here. It's telling us there are 320 days between these dates, which is exactly what Thinkorswim showed. Next, remember that the pricing models need to know the percentage of the year. So that's about 87% of a year. I'm not exactly sure what TOS uses. It might be 360 days, 365. I use 365 and a quarter, but that's why we might be off by just a few pennies. Scaling factor, 0.94. That's saying that this should be square root of time, which we talked about in the presentation. Next, we enter the actual volatility. This is what was showing in Thinkorswim, 0.6855. So down below this scaled volatility is saying take this number in red times the scaling factor, the square root of time, and we get 0.6416. Now what I have to also do, which we talked about briefly in the presentation, I also have to subtract the variance over two. So remember that the variance is the square of this number divided by two. So that comes up to be 0 0.2058 if I take 6416 minus 2058, I get 4358. So this is the number that you want to keep your eye on. We're going to take E raised to the volatility, which is this number in blue. We get 1.546. The stock price, according to Thinkorswim, was 108.25. So the upper limit is this number in red, 108.25, times this number right here, 1.546 and we should get 167.37. And I believe that's about what we got. Maybe it was 167.38 in TOS. Now, what about the lower bound? Well, here we have to take this number, this little correction factor, and actually add it. So if we take the 0.6416 plus the 0.2058, we get 0.8475. I take E raised to actually the negative of this number since it's really talking about exponential decay and we multiply it by the stock price, we get 46.38, which is exactly what we saw in TOS. And I think it might have been, I think it was right on there, 46.38. So that's where these numbers are coming from. So just to show that these aren't doctored, because I know that somebody's going to think that, let's go try this April 21st of 2023. We have a high of 171.96 and a low of 40.16. So that looks like about 411 days to expiration. Our volatility number hasn't changed, still showing 0.6855. So let's bring up the Excel spreadsheet and see if these numbers are correct. So the first thing to change is the date, which was April 21st of 2023, and it was 411 days. And so if we keep all of the other factors the same because the volatility didn't change, it shows that the upper bound should be about 171.95. And I think we had 171.96. And the lower bound should be about 40.16. And I think that was exactly what we had, 40.16. So the point is, is that yes, you can come up with a mathematical model to say here's where the stock prices should be making one big assumption, that it's only volatility that is affecting the stock's price. So when you're trading in these volatile markets, obviously understanding volatility is going to be very important. But more importantly, and probably one of the bigger points of this video, especially if you didn't quite follow along with all of the math, which is fine, is to understand that these numbers that you're looking at with probability analysis, regardless of which platform you're using, have nothing to do with buyouts, rumors, wars, anything else that can happen anything to do with news. There's no way we could put that into a pricing model. So keep that in mind, and that's why it's so important to trade the markets, but hedge your opinion. 
And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa to z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.